This is Air Mail to the Moon by Tom Birdseye and illustrated by Stephen Gamble. My name is Aura Mae Cotton of Crabapple Orchard and last night somebody stole my tooth. I've been down at the creek catching crawdads when it started to tangling. Kind of like when you missed your toast with your peanut butter and you bit really hard down instead. That was three weeks ago. I was popcorn in a pan excited for sure that that was gonna fall out just any second. But that all, that's what I call my daddy, always says not to milk the cow when she's asleep. Which is crabapple orchard talk for not blabbing to everybody before you got something to blab about. So, I didn't tell a soul. Then last Monday, while fetching the mail at the county road, I stuck my tongue out at that pesky neighbor of mine, Marietta Bean, and I gave her a big old raspberry like this. <laughs> well, the vibration from my tongue flapping against my teeth popped that chomper of mine loose as a goose on ice skates. <laughs> So I told the world about my first tooth coming out, whether they wanted to hear it or not. By Thursday, that tooth was so wobbly, it was just hanging on by a root and a flap of skin. I could push it all the way out between my lips with my tongue and help Mama slot pigs at the same time. Oreo. Mama said to me, Oreo's my nickname, because it's just like the sweet cookie that I am. Don't flop that tooth around in your, in your mouth. You stop working it around like that. It reminds me of your cousin Cyrus before he got his braces. So I kept working that tooth inside my mouth, worrying it like mad with my tongue. Then Friday, right after my big brother Bodine and my little sister Kelsey Ann got into a fight at the dinner table over whether Arlene Peterson's pigs really kneel and pray before they eat, that loose tooth of mine fell right out of my mouth. Plop! It landed smack dab in the middle of my spaghetti. Mama said to be sure to put that tooth under my pillow. That way the tooth fairy would come and get it and leave me some money. Money? Shoot, howdy! Mama didn't say how much, but I figured it had to be at least a thousand dollars, or maybe even a hundred dollars. I was so excited that I hurried to bed as quick as a dropped cat, just so I could dream about the things I was going to buy. But like I said, somebody stole my tooth, so I guess I dreamed all night long for nothing. First thing that morning when I discovered the crime, I ran lickety-split to my mama. She was in the root cellar, up to her elbows in rutabagas. Mama, I exploded, is the tooth fairy a crook like old Hester Jenkins that stole the parking meter right out in front of the county courthouse? Mama jumped back and her eyes was as big as sausages. Why no, Oreo. The tooth fairy is as honest as flowers in the spring. That's what I thought I fumed. Well, then somebody besides the tooth fairy stole my tooth. Somebody's so crooked they have to screw their socks on every morning. And when I catch them, I'm going to open up a can of gotcha and I'm going to send them airmail to the moon. Now, Mama looked over at me real hard. Oreo, she said, I don't think anybody would steal your tooth. Maybe the tooth fairy is putting it on a string with other teeth to make a beautiful necklace. That's what I heard she does with them. She probably forgot to leave you some money. And maybe she'll remember tonight. Well, that didn't sound too likely to me. What good's a tooth fairy that forgets? Why don't you go ask your daddy, Mama suggested, seeing how upset I was. Maybe he knows something that we don't. Aha, I thought. He's a real thinker, my dad all is. Why, he even sells watermelons to the grocery store. 
He knows might near everything. I heard that all before I spied him. He was out by the tire swing shaving and a singing at the same time, which seems mighty dangerous if you ask me. Half his face in shaving cream and the other half as smooth as a baby's belly, as he liked to say. Dino! I yelled. Some crook stole my tooth, and when I catch him, I'm gonna open up a can of gotcha and I'm gonna send him airmail to the moon. Dad all looked at me real hard. Oreo, he said. I don't think anybody would steal your tooth. Maybe the tooth fairy has it and is grinding it up in a big machine. That tooth dust might come out as money. Then the tooth fairy could use it to, you know, buy some real estate and like one of them condominiums down there in Miami Beach. Dad all sauntered over to the back porch steps and sat down and he was a thinking. Thinking about the tooth fairy and money and machines and condominiums, I figure. It was all a who'd have thought it but me. What would I do with a condominium in Miami Beach? Yeah, tooth dust, said Dad all. Tooth dust, I shouted, but Dad all, somebody stole my tooth. Dad all rubbed his chin and nodded. Why don't you go ask your brother? He usually knows more than he tells. Aha, I thought, heading to the barnyard. My brother Bodine is as honor as a bull in a beehive and he lost two teeth last week when he fell out of the hayloft. I'll bet you he stole my tooth and glued it straight into his mouth. I'm gonna get that boy, I vowed, and when I do, I'm gonna open up a can of gotcha and I'm gonna send him airmail to the moon. I didn't steal your tooth, Oreo, Brother Bodine said calmly, crawling out from under the corn crib. What would I do with girl teeth anyway? They don't fit boys. Huh, I hadn't thought of that. Are you sure you just didn't give it to the tooth fairy with no money down? Now, why would I go and do a thing like that, I demanded to know. That would be just stupid. Bodine eyed the hen house. He was looking for his pet snake, Fluff. The tooth fairy saves teeth to give to babies, right, Oreo? Well, not according to Mama and Dad all, she don't. Well, according to me, Bodine Cotton, she does. That's so they can chew on rocks and shoes and stuff. Bodine, you're ornery, I reminded him, talking about babies like that. Yep, he whispered as he snuck into the hen house door, but I'm right. Where do you think Sister Kelsey Ann got her two teeth when she's little? Aha, uh -huh, I thought. Maybe Bodine has a point. Kelsey Ann is as honorary as Bodine plus 10. She had to be the little rascal that stole my tooth. I'm gonna get that little diddle do. The tooth fairy, Bodine asked, sticking his head out of the chicken house, fluff in one hand and scared chicken squawking everywhere. No, Kelsey Ann, I snapped. And when I do, I'm gonna open up a can of gotcha and I'm gonna send her airmail to the moon. Kelsey Ann Cotton, I yelled up the apple tree. Give me back my tooth. I know you stole it. Pink feathers, she said, hanging upside down from her knees on the tree. I'm as sweet as roses in the snow. The tooth fairy steals teeth, not me. She makes them into doorknobs. Didn't you know that, Oreo? Not according to Mama, Dad, or Bodine, she don't. You took it. She does too, cause I didn't, Kelsey Ann snipped. Does not you did, does too, I didn't. Does not you did, Kelsey Ann giggled. I bet you threw it away, Oreo. It's probably in the bottom of the garbage can stuck in the middle of that spaghetti, right in the middle of it. That's how forgetful you are. That tooth will never be a doorknob. That did it. I was so mad I was ready to scream. 
Nobody, nobody really knew what the tooth fairy was up to. Nobody was a bit of help and nobody was the lop eared rascal that stole my tooth. I was about to pop my cork. I was about to pop it clean out of crab apple orchard. That's how mad I was. But instead, I just stood there looking at my upside down sister. And I started to cry. Loud, long, big tears streaming down my face. It was all tasting like salt. I didn't want to cry, but I just couldn't stop. Now we cottons, we banner and shout and squabble and argue a fair amount just like any other self-respecting family. But if it ever comes to a cotton ball and real tears of grief, the rest of them come a-running. Dad, all Mama, Bodine, Kelsey Ann, and even the pesky little old neighbor, Mary Ada Bean, came a-running. They's there in five seconds flat. <laughs> Some, somebody stole my tooth, I sobbed, crying harder than ever. And when I catch them, I'm gonna open up a can of gotcha and I'm gonna send them airmail to the moon. And I stuck my hands down in my pockets, trying to make it look like I really meant it. Well, my name is Ormay Cotton from Crab Apple Orchard. My face is hot. My toes are curling, and right now I feel like a possum up a plum tree. I'm as embarrassed as a zebra without stripes. You see, there's this little hard thing in the bottom of my pocket. It's right where I left it. I wonder if the Tooth Fairy ever sends motor mouth kids like me airmail to the moon.